Praise the Lord. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? We're on top, right? We're winners. Glory to God. A lot to be excited about. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. And it is a beautiful day here in Tom's River, New Jersey. Glory to God. Welcome those who are joining us online. I'm Eddie Storino, pastor here at Abundant Grace Church. And uh, this class is a class where we feed our spirit on the anointed word of God. And uh, the result is strong, ever-increasing faith. And then you can't help but get, but have your faith increase when you have a steady diet of God's Word. But I'll tell you this, if you have a steady diet of the wrong thing, fear could, could grip you, can control you, and uh, the enemy has a field day with that. But thank God we have learned enough that uh, we need to keep our keep our, our focus and our meditation on His Word. Amen? And uh, His Word is life to us. So that's what this class is about. Certainly not about denying problems. It's, it's, uh, it's it, looking at how we overcome the problems. Amen? And, uh, and uh, we're victorious. God has made us winners. And um, the choice is up to us if we're going to win or if we're going to be overcome. Amen. But the Lord has called us. God has called us winners. He said, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. So we encourage each other. We stir ourselves up. And, uh, and when you look at, the, at God's word, his word is medicine to us. And so you can picture yourself taking a heavy dose of God's medicine today. Quickening power, strengthening power, amen, answers to questions, all those good things are found in his will, amen. So uh, why don't we release our faith together, let's put our trust in God this morning that uh, as I open my mouth that he'll fill it with, he know, with what he knows we need to hear today, amen, and uh, uh, believe God for answers to questions that you have, revelation knowledge, amen. Father, we come to you now, we value your word, Lord, your word is life to us. It is, it is health to our bodies. Father, it is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. It shows us the way. And if we'll follow you and everything that you say, we'll always be prospering. We'll always be having good success. You promised us that in your word. And so as we open it today and study it, Lord, I ask you for revelation knowledge. We together put our faith on it and release our faith for that today, that you'd speak accurately, boldly, exactly what you want spoken today. I trust you that you'll fill my, my lips and my mouth with what you want spoken. And most importantly, Father, we say you bring glory to yourself in it. For it's your word, we're just a messenger. And we want to do it exactly the way you want it done to bring glory to you. You deserve all the glory, all the honor. We thank you for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, if you're tuning in for the first time, we, uh, we read and pray together our Ephesian prayers, the, the, the two found in Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 3, and also in Colossians chapter 1. And I always reiterate this point. We're, we don't do that as a ritualistic type of thing or a, uh, or, or a religious type format. We do it because there's power in it, and the Lord has impressed us to do it. And, and we, don't, we, we don't have to just um, keep it for this class. We should do this as often. I would encourage you every time you eat, we should open up the scriptures and feed our spirit as well. So then you know at least, at least you're getting the word three times a day, at least. <laughs> Some maybe more than that. But uh, it'll build our spirit. Smith Wigglesworth always said that. He would eat, and then he'd push himself back from the table, and he'd say, well, now we fed our, our bodies, now let's feed our spirit. And he would read something about faith from the, his little New Testament that he would keep with him all the time. But uh, So that's why we do this, and the Lord has been given us such tremendous revelation. You know, <laughs> at times we begin to pray these in faith, and, and the Lord just starts teaching through these things. Amen? And, uh, and so we expect that to happen today. So let's do that. Let's put our faith on it and, and thank God for revelation, knowledge, answers to questions today in Jesus' name. So Ephesians chapter 1, this is the GW, God's Word translation. And this is Paul praying these inspired utterance from the Holy Ghost while he was in prison. Just so you know, he wasn't on vacation somewhere. And when the Lord spoke to him, he was in a dungeon and uh, had every reason in the natural to complain. Wouldn't you agree? 
Every reason in the natural, if he was led by his feelings, he'd have been complaining, he'd have been questioning God, he'd have been mad, he'd have, and all sorts of just, I mean, on top of being in prison, it would have just been worse for him. But, thank God, he walked by faith, didn't he? And that's how we are to walk, and that's why he was able to confidently say that no matter what condition I'm in, I've learned how to be content. Learn how to be content. Amen. And, you know, the sun always rises. It may be midnight hour, but light is on its way, you know, and we just hold fast to our confession of faith. So the, here's, here's this inspired prayer, and we're going to pray it together today, beginning in Ephesians chapter 1, seven, verse 17. I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength for me, a believer. A believer. Do I have any believers here today? Yes, we are believers. So that means it works for us. It doesn't work for doubters. It doesn't work for mockers or, or skeptics. It works for the believer. You worked with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and gave him the honored position, the one next to you, the Father, on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and governments of all sorts, because that's the day and age we live in, and any other name that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him concerning the church. You made him the head of everything for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. Glory to God. And these good things are happening for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then uh, flip over to Ephesians chapter 3. And Paul continues praying here, beginning in verse 16. He says, I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. Through faith. Did you hear that? Through faith. Why is that important? Because the just live by faith, and without faith, we cannot be pleasing to God. So he's praying this. He said that, 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 that it would live in me, that Christ will live in me through faith. So many people are trying to approach God and their salvation through feelings. And we don't, we don't communicate with God through our head and through our feelings. We communicate to him, with him through our spirit, spirit to spirit, which is the real us, which is born again the minute you receive Christ into your, into your heart. It's the mind that has to be renewed. And we need to renew it specifically with the word of God to, to get your, your, your head and your heart in agreement. Right, and uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But it's it's by faith, not by feelings. So you can get up every day and say, Father, I know that you hear me. I know that you hear me. I know that you're with me. I know that I don't have to feel anything. By faith, you're living on the inside of me. And if He's living on the inside of you, then you are more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror, overcoming everything. Right? Any kind of any anything that seems insignificant or big, doesn't matter. If it comes against you and it's trespassing, you have authority over it. And we have to exercise that authority, right? We're the ones. We can't just throw our hands up and say, God, do something about it. Because he's always going to yell back, I already did. What are you doing about it? What are, you, what are we doing about it, right? We have to protect and, and, and enforce and exercise our authority. And if it's trespassing, then call it out. Say, you cannot stay here. I don't care if it's a sore throat or a headache. It has no business trespassing on a child of God. And the more we do that, that's how your faith grows. You know, instead of, instead of oh, well, it's just a headache. You know, I'll take some Tylenol. Nothing wrong with taking Tylenol. But speak to the headache first. Speak to the headache and say, headache, you have to go. You know, if we're not used to doing that, when something bigger comes, we're never going to do it. Right? I, I, I mean, I've gotten to that place in my own life where if it's a headache, a sore throat, a tickle, a scratch, whatever it is, I take authority over it. And you know what? It goes every single time. Every single time. Because, and if, I, and if I'm going about my day and I still feel it, I say, nope, 
no, you have to go. You cannot stay here. I already, and you resist him and he flees. Amen. So, but we got to practice by faith. We do that by faith. So that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. In this way, with all of God's people, I will be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. When you get to know God's love for us, it, it, you, we can't wrap our natural heads around it. But faith works by understanding how much God loves us. And I, you know, the Lord showed me that because we wouldn't put our trust in someone that we didn't think loved us. Isn't that true? We wouldn't, we wouldn't be confident. But he does love us. He loves us. He, he gave his son for us to restore us to that original relationship that Adam had walking with God in the cool of the evening in the Garden of Eden. That's, what, that's why he sent Jesus for us. Amen? So we will know Christ's love. He says, I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I'm praying this so that I may be completely filled with you, Father God. For glory belongs to you, whose power is at work in me. And by your power, you can do infinitely more than I can ask or imagine. Glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And then the last one that, that uh, we're going to pray together here is found in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 9. Colossians 1, verse 9. And, yep, Paul is still in prison. <laughs> still full of faith, still encouraging the churches, right? You know, he might be chained, but the gospel is not chained, amen? And th th this has power to change. You know, it's amazing to me, thousands of years later, and here we are, being encouraged and strengthened by the same inspired utterance that took place all that time ago. Isn't that amazing? It's the Word of God. It's living. It's powerful. It's not like reading any other kind of book. This is truth, and the truth makes us free. Glory to God. So, Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 9. He says, For this reason, now this is where we should perk up our ears here. For this reason, I have not stopped seeking you about this, praying about this. This is, this is Paul. Uh, you know, who wrote two-thirds, inspired by the Holy Ghost, two-thirds of the New Testament. So when he says, this is something I have not stopped seeking you about, we should tune into that, right? So what is it? You know, most people would say, uh, maybe he's been asking the Lord to get him out of jail. And uh, that would seem logical, but that's not what he was asking. <laughs> he was not asking about getting out of jail. It was constantly in a priority to him uh, asking the Lord to fill him with an understanding of his will. Isn't that amazing? Of all the things that Paul could have been seeking at that time, knowing his history and what he's gone through and what he has endured, he was asking to be filled with an understanding of the will of God or God's word. That's what he wanted most importantly. He obviously had that connection that if I know and understand his word and his will, then I I'll be fine no matter where I'm at or what condition I'm in. And, and we see that he was. He was. And so that's, that's our prayer. Father, fill us. Fill us with an understanding of your word through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. And that's what praying these prayers is doing for us. He says, I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves that I belong to you or that says, yes, I am a believer. Um, how do we, you know, as a believer, for people that know that we're a believer without saying anything, they should see something, shouldn't they? Right? I mean, we know an apple tree before we ever take an apple off of it and eat it, right? And how do we know it's an apple tree? Because we could see fruit hanging on it, right? It's not, um, so there should be fruit hanging on a believer's life that says, and Paul was saying, this way... I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves that I do belong to you. And, we, and, and you know what? We should have, uh, uh, the, the scriptures tell us that a tree is known by the fruit that it produces. And as believers, we should have these fruits of the Spirit operating in our lives, which, which causes the world to say there's something different about them. 
All right, there's something different about us, and uh, that's why it's the will of God that we be restored, that we be made whole, spirit, soul, and body. And this doesn't mean that's not condemnation if we're dealing with things, but listen, the enemy tries to come to rob us of the good blessings that God has for us, and, uh, and he can't do anything unless we authorize him and give him permission. Now, now Christians don't understand that they're giving him per- permission primarily by what they're saying. You know, the simple little phrase that so many people say, oh, man, this thing is killing me. I cringe when I hear that. I do. It's so um, so opposing what God's Word says. And th- those little things that seem, oh, come on, you're just a stickler for the... Yes, I am a stickler for the Word because those little things are the thing that is giving the enemy permission to continue to wreak havoc in your life. See, and I, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but we're, we're just going to go with this. The... Um, and we're going to look at Mark 11, 23 and 24 today. And I know that's such a uh, popular verse of Scripture uh, when it comes to talking about believing God. But uh, the Bible doesn't say that we get what we believe. The Bible says that we have what we say. And we're going to look at that. And, and what you believe, what you do believe in your heart is evidenced by what you say. And so if we're walking around all the time and so many people will say, oh, well, I believe, pastor, I believe, I believe. And then the next word out of their mouth is, oh, man, this thing's killing me. I never, I always have this. I never have that. That's what they believe because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, but we could correct that. It doesn't mean that if you find yourself talking that way, you don't have to go, oh, I'm just a bad Christian. No, you're just full of the wrong stuff. So it's real simple. Start filling yourself up with the Word of God. And when you look in the Word and you see what God's Word says, when, when you go to believe, your believing is based on what He said, and your saying in your confession reflects what you believe in your heart. So we get what we say, not so much we, what we believe. But if we're believing right, we'll be speaking right. And if we're, if, we're, if we're meditating on the right thing, then we'll believe the right thing and we'll speak the right thing and we will have the right thing. But uh, the, the Bible tells us that life and death are in the power of our tongue. And so if, if, if it was important enough to put that in Scripture, we have to recognize and understand that we're being snared by what we're saying. You understand that? Um, We give permission to the enemy by what proceeds out of our mouth. And if we agree with God and we say what God says, that, 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 that causes the enemy to have to flee. He has no right. But what he tries to do is to get us to say the wrong thing. He comes to us with feelings. He comes to us with symptoms. He comes to us with fear. He comes to us with doubt. And some of that is because we're looking at the wrong thing, so we don't want to help him out, right? But he comes to us with those kind of feelings and emotions and uh, to get us to start to say the wrong thing. He did it with Adam and Eve, and he's been doing it since the beginning of time. But like we said yesterday, we don't have to fear the devil. In fact, we should, we should let him know that he's so under our feet that our Father actually created you. Right? Remind him of that. You were created by my Father. And then you became rebellious and he kicked you out of heaven. So you are nowhere close to an equal. You are under my foot. You are defeated. And if you'll just say that, if you'll say those things, get that coming out of your mouth. Open up the will of God. Take a look at it. 1 Peter 2, 24, Galatians 3, 13, Isaiah 53, Matthew 8, 17. All these scriptures that talk about um, healing being ours will fill your heart with faith. And then that's what you will speak. And you'll notice that when you go to say the wrong thing, you get pricked in your heart. Like immediately, you, it, it, when, when you go to say it, something gets you on the inside. You're like, ah, that's, I shouldn't have said that because that's not, that's not what I believe. I believe what the Word of God says. 
I believe what he has said. And he said that I am more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. If God is for me, what could possibly be against me? Amen. But this is this is um, comes from spending time in God's word and looking at the right thing, at the right thing. So let's finish uh, this Colossians prayer here. He said, uh, to fill me, I'm asking you to fill me with an understanding and knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves that I belong to you. Then I will want to please you. When will he want to please him? When he's filled with a knowledge of his word and understanding of his word, right? Then I want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. I ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure and overcome everything with joy. If you're going through something right now, stay the course. Don't relinquish. Don't let up. Keep your confession of faith. You declare every day that I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. I am being completely restored. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what the enemy's telling you in your ear. You just keep rejoicing, saying, Father, I thank you that I will see the manifestation of your promise. And that's what you declare. You, you do that every day. I mean, you know, some things take longer. I, I don't have the answer for that, but we do know that we'll need patient endurance because the scriptures tell us that, right? Overcome, patient, endure everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness, and you brought me into the kingdom of your Son, whom you love. Glory to God. You know, the enemy will just keep trying to, to kick you and try to keep throwing things at you to discourage you, right? And we may even are tempted to think, man, now this, you know, and, and those thoughts come to us and we don't deny that. But when those thoughts come, you say, Satan, you get behind me in Jesus name. I don't care what you bring my way. I'm a winner. I'm a winner because if God is for me, there's nothing that could be against me. And if he said I'm healed, then I'm healed. And that's what you tell him. And then he'll come with something else. And you say, I, I guess you're hard of hearing. This is who I am in Christ. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. That means every form of sickness, every, every symptom, every pain, every problem, I've been redeemed from. And that needs to be our confession of faith. But that's called the fight of faith. And that's called being strong in your spirit to be able to speak these things the way, um, the way we're supposed to. Amen? So it, it's certainly not for the, uh, for the weak and faint of heart. It's not for the ones that are going to just try it. But it only takes mustard seed faith to get the job done. Amen. And, and, and beginning to believe what God said. And faith comes to us. How? By hearing. By hearing it. Faith comes. This today, what we're saying right now, is building faith inside of us because we're hearing the anointed word of God. We're not hearing some, something that's going to produce fear. We're, not, we're hearing his anointed words. Now, I want us to uh, I want to read to you here, and then I want to talk a little bit about Joshua and Caleb. Everybody remember Joshua and Caleb, right, in the book of Numbers. But I wanted us to read from Proverbs uh, chapter 9, and then I want to look at a verse in Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 9 in verse 10 and 11, and I really want us to look at verse 11, but verse 10 is, is as important. Proverbs 9 says this in verse 10, The fear of the Lord, or the reverence, I should say, the honor of God, is the starting point of wisdom. The starting point. Okay, so that means we could grow in wisdom. That's just the beginning of it. The fear of the Lord, the honor of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge and understanding of the Holy One is understanding. Right? And so this is why we pray these prayers that we're praying and trusting God to give us revelation knowledge, to give us an understanding like Paul prayed. And then verse 11 says this, when you, when you do verse 10, you get verse 11. And ready for verse 11? For by me, your days will be many and years, say years, years will be added, not taken away, added to your life. That's the will of God. 
That, so when you hear people say, oh, well, God just, then God just, you know, had, to, God had a better plan for them, so he took them. Then, then, then if that's the case, then, then God's confused, right? And we know he's not confused. We know there's an enemy out here that lies to us, that deceives us, that tries to give, get us to give him permission to destroy our lives. And he's the one who wants us off this planet. I mean, we're already born again, and he don't want us sharing that with anybody else. But that's not up to him. That's not up to him. He's on the outside looking in. Amen. We're, we're, we are been uh, um, redeemed from that, that, that curse of darkness and sin, and we've been translated into the kingdom of light. Amen. So for by me, when we reverence and honor God, he says, by me, your days will be many. And years will be added to your life. You should, we should walk around saying, Father, I thank you that you're adding years to my life because I honor you. That, that, that confession alone would make a big difference. That's a lot different than saying, man, this pain is killing me. <laughs> Isn't that complete? Now, I'm not saying that, you're, that the pain isn't there. I'm not saying that. I've had pain, and I know what that feels like, and, and, and your head goes tilt when you start calling yourself healed when your body's in pain. But friend, do it by faith anyway. You say, Father, I might have some pain right now, but you're strong in me, and you're adding years to my life. You are adding years to my life. I will live and not die, and I will declare your works. And you'll receive glory. That which the enemy had tried to take me out, you'll be glorified when I stand up and say, God healed and delivered me. And it'll be a testimony for other people to believe. Amen. So, uh, so he'll add, he adds years to our life. Years to our life. And then just go over to chapter 10 and take a look at verse 27. And let this one stir you up a little bit. Same, same type of reference here. It says, the fear of the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean to fear God because you're afraid of him. That means an awe-filled respect for God. When we respect him and honor him as holy as, as, as he is, then it says, that prolongs your life. Prolongs life. So we have promises. Now, why am I saying that today? Because you may have, maybe the doctors have told you something that, uh, you know, uh, this is an incurable thing. This is something that most people don't live past a certain time, or they've given you an expiration date, okay? You, you can. You can thank them. They're trying to help you, right? But you say, Father, you promised if I honor you, you'd prolong my life. You'd add years to my life. Well, I honor you all the days of my life, so I thank God that I'm going to have a long, full life, satisfied. And when I'm ready and it's good with you, then I'll come home. But for now, I got a job to do. And, and that's what, this is why this is good news. We need to speak those things out of our mouth in the face of contradicting circumstances, right? Whose report are we going to believe? We got to believe the report of the Lord, right? We got to believe the report of the Lord. Isaiah 53, and let's just take a look at that for a moment. And then I want us to, uh, no, we're just being led here. So let's see. Isaiah 53, beginning in the first verse. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Verse 3 says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised, and yet we didn't value him. Yet he himself bore our sickness, and he carried our pains. But we in turn regarded him stricken down by God and afflicted. But no, he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds, by his stripes. We are restored, and we are healed. That is the report. You don't need another report. 
I'm telling you that right now. And listen, I don't know where you're at in your, in your fight of faith and what you might be dealing with. But I could tell you, from, and I can only say for myself, that, uh, you know, I'm all for doctors, 100%. I thank God for doctors, and he's given them the wisdom that they have. But they could come to you with a bad report. And, uh, you know, and for me personally, if I'm dealing with something like that, I don't I, uh, treat me, treat it the way you want to treat it. But I don't need to know all the details. I don't need to know the details. And I'm going to tell you this. And it might sound if you if you fill your mind, think about this for a minute. If what you don't know is better off, because when you start to hear it, what does it do to you? It starts to promote fear, and now you have to deal with your mind. When, if all we look at is God's Word and Isaiah 53 and Galatians 3.13, we've been redeemed from the curse of sickness and disease. And, Father, I thank you that you're taking the part with the doctors because they're trying to help me. But I am restored. I am restored. Friend, it is important that we look only at the report of the Lord. I'm telling you that right now. Too many, too many people are, are looking at other reports. I'm not denying these reports. I'm not, none of that. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just not going to let my mind look at that and then have to deal with the thoughts of, wow, that's what they said I have? Oof. And then what happens? It zaps your, you, everything. You're like, oh, man, that's not a good report. We don't have any other. All we have is a good report. All we have is a good report. If you're in Christ, then that report belongs to you. I want us to, uh, to, to look at um, uh, numbers. I want to just read this. The story of Joshua and Caleb. And this is so important because um, what is the report of the Lord, guys? What is it? Concerning our health. There's a bunch of them in there. But we know what the good report is, right? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace was on him, and with his stripes he healed me. It's not something that he's about to do. It's not something he's getting ready to do. It's something that he already did, accomplished, finished, wrapped it up in a package, and said, take healing. And that's what we do. When we release our faith, we believe that, and we take it. And we begin to say, I believe I receive my healing. When do we believe we receive? When we pray. When we pray, and um, and and we also be, and we so we believe we receive when we pray, and we speak it out of our mouth. We say, and we're going to look at Mark eleven. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he's saying is going to come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now. If it's, com if it's coming to pass, that means it hasn't come to pass yet. But it'll come to pass as we keep speaking. Does everybody understand that? So we can't get all up in a, you know, we believe we receive when we pray. And so we should say, I believe I receive, and it shall come to pass. That's what we talk. That's the good report. It shall come to pass because God said so. And don't go check in and say, oh, but I still have. doesn't matter. Those things are all subject to change, but because of what we're saying out of our mouth will cause those things to change. Does everybody believe that this morning? The power of God is a real force. It is a real power. It is something that tangible that we can experience in our life, but it's experienced not through feelings. It's experienced and laid hold of by faith, by faith. So uh, Joshua and Caleb spoke unto the company of the children of Israel. I'm just reading to you here. Saying, the land which we pass through to search, search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. That was the report of Joshua and Caleb when, they, when, when Moses sent out the 12 spies. Ten came back and said, oh, yeah, that's a nice land, but there's giants in that land. Now, isn't it funny that God would say, go in and possess the land when there's giants in it? 
God, why did you tell us to take that land that there's giants in and tell us how good it is? He knows something that we don't. You're going to go in there and you're going to defeat the giants. Just like that's what we're doing in, in this world right now. And we're dealing with giants, maybe sickness, maybe financial problem, maybe all these kind of things. But we are not to, God calls us victorious. We need to agree with God. If he says, I made you a conqueror, then we're going to be a conqueror. I mean, and you can't win if there's no contest, right? How do you know you won if you weren't in a contest? Isn't that true? So Joshua and Caleb, the rest of them said, oh, yeah, that's a nice land, but there's giants in that land. There's no way we can. What were they looking at? They weren't being led by the spirit of faith. They were being led by what they can see and what they can feel. And Joshua and Caleb said, knock it off. Stop talking like that. God said we can go in there, and we can go in there and, 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 and take that land. Take that land. And so they were the two spies who had a good report. They didn't deny that giants were in Canaan. They simply added that the children of Israel would be able to overcome the giants. Are we overcoming some giants? Yes, we are. The scriptures tell us that we can. Uh, whosoever shall say and speak unto their mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, not doubt in their heart, but believe it, they shall have whatsoever they say. Amen. So, um, so we, we, we lay hold, we believe with our heart, not with our head. And why is that important? Because our head may be telling you something completely different. And that's when you got to tell your head, shut up. I believe God with my heart. Head, knock it off. My spirit runs the show, not you. And I believe, I receive. And it shall come to pass. Those words should be flowing out of our mouth all the time, not not doubt, not fear, not worry, not it seems like it's getting worse. I can't believe that's a report. Listen, if you haven't read that kind of report, then you won't be able to say, I can't believe that's the report they came back with. I'm not interested. Thank you. However you need to treat me, let's do it. But I have a report that says I'm well and I'm getting better. I don't need to listen to all the other stuff, because all that is going to do is make it more of a battle in my mind to have to overcome those things. If you believe God's report, then we don't... Listen, that's why in, in our church, and we've done this for so many years, and the Lord is trying to bring us up and correct some things, you know, and, and, uh, and we should, as he gives us more understanding and knowledge, we need to obey what he's saying. And... Uh, for a number of years, we always used to pray. Someone would ask, you know, pray, I'm going to the doctors tomorrow. Pray that I have a good report. And there's, I won't pray that because it doesn't say pray for a good report. It doesn't say any of that. It already tells us that we declare the good report because what if, what if they find something? You know, the, the devil is the god of this world. He, he, we're not denying that they, obviously you have a problem. That's why you're going to the doctor. But your trust is in God. And we're not praying for something that we already have. Why am I praying for a good report? Don't we already have the good report? We absolutely have the good report. I don't care what that other report says. Makes zero difference to me. Makes zero difference. They could say, man, buddy, you, this, I just say, dude, that's fine. Whatever you think, you keep to yourself. I already know my God, and he lives on the inside of me, and he'll not leave me. He said he will add years to my life. So my life is being lengthened, not shortened, and not according to, I'm just making this up. It's in the will. I read it in the will, and if it's in the will, it belongs to me. That's how we have to, that's the fight of faith, guys. That's bold, that's confident, but that comes from hearing the word of God and having faith come to you, build you up, strengthen you. And when thoughts come that are contrary, you don't play with those thoughts. You immediately say, nope, that's not the will of God. I'll not have that. I believe I receive, and it shall come to pass. That's what you say. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law, sickness, and disease. I've been healed. It shall come to pass in my life. And I'm telling you, friend, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Your body will be restored. You may go through the battle, but you're going to come out a winner. A winner. 
Everyone, uh, you know, that's the trying and the testing of our faith. And it's to bring us up to something even better. You know, this world is full of sickness, disease. It's full of evil. It's full of sin. But we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We don't have to be subject to what everyone else has to deal with. You know, I hear people all the time, I turn the news off, or I turn it off when they start saying, oh man, all these new cases of flu, it's spreading, I shut it off, I don't, I'm not even allowing that to enter my head. You know why? I'm not getting it. It's not coming in my house, I declare it so, and if it tries, I'm not going to just lay over and let it run through. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resist it like he said to, like a soldier, that's what we are, right? But, but the, the point is... We can't get looking at those external things. We have to like put blinders on and just stay with the word. Read what the good report is. What does God say about it? When you face giants of life, don't have a negative confession. Don't talk doubt and have an evil report. Faith always has a good report. Always. Oh, we might be having some problems right now, but glory to God, we're overcomers. We might have this right now, yes, but glory to God, that's all changing. Faith always has a good report. And that might irritate people because they'll be like, man, that's all you ever say. That's all I'm ever going to say, and I'm going to have every good thing that God has promised that I'd have. You know, and, uh, and we are well able to overcome the giants in our life because the Lord is with me, and greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? And you know what? I think we'll end right there today because otherwise I can end up going. And if I start something else, then it would just take us too, too much longer. But I wanted to encourage you today. The report of the Lord. Speak that out of your mouth. Start saying every day that I believe I receive whatever it is. And it shall come to pass that which I'm speaking out of my mouth. See, we believe with our heart and then we confess it and speak it with our mouth. Right? And... What you say is evidence of what you believe, right? So if we're not happy with what we're saying, then let's get more word inside and start sp and, and, and change our confession. Amen? God bless you guys. I'm glad you tuned in today. I believe that you were encouraged. And I believe right now with you, I join my faith with yours. For whatever it is that you believe you receive, I believe with you. And if it comes to healing, finances, whatever it is in your life, I believe with you. And I will confess and speak the same thing with you. And it shall, look at me, it shall come to pass in your life. And we'll shout and do a victory lap and scream and, and give God all the glory, putting it right in the devil's face because he's a liar and he's got nothing on us. He's a trespasser. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, remember, we have our women's meeting here, Abundant Grace Church women's meeting tonight at 6 p.m. So come on out and, uh, and, and see who you really are in Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.